Hello world, welcome to the 26th video on my channel where I'm building my own AI named Shane. This is the fourth video in my Zillow API playlist. In the previous video in this playlist, we took this Excel sheet with only the addresses of my neighborhood where my rental property is out and autonomously got the Zestimate and square feet of each one and saved it to this Excel. Okay, so and just to show off, this laptop doesn't even have Microsoft on it. So as you can see, it says most of the features are disabled because it hasn't been activated. And so I have just been too lazy to use the Microsoft at home since I'm military. We get a discount. I've just been too lazy to do it. So we were able to use the addresses, get the prices and the square feet straight from Zillow. So in this video, we're going to use a powerful library called Pandas to do some very basic data analytics on my neighborhood where my rental property is at using this Excel sheet, which simply has three columns, the address, the prices, and the square feet. Okay, I'm going to exit out of these. So the data... Uh, we'll be using is from October 5th since I haven't updated it yet. That's when I first did that video. I removed some of the addresses because there were some errors and uh, they would skew, skew the data I'm about to show you. So for this video, we're actually going to start off in the code. Okay, I have this function called pandas neighborhood test. And we're going to start off by creating a data frame by reading the Excel and telling it that the first column will be the index. So uh, if you don't have pandas installed, go to your command prompt and type in pip install pandas and then import pandas as pd. Okay, so that's what we've done here. So we're going to create a data frame using pd so that's telling it's pandas as pd, pd.readexcel. We're going to take that listing of the Excel I just showed you, and then we're going to tell it that the index column is zero. So the pandas, we're going to, uh, it'll create its own index and start off with um, naming your rows for you. I don't want that. I want each address to be the first column. So that's what this index column equals zero is. Okay, so first we're going to see the shape of the data form. So this tells us how many rows and columns we have. So let's check that out. And since I'm recording, it takes a while. And this tells us how many rows and columns. So we have 535 rows and two columns. That's not exactly true because um, in programming, most programming languages count by starting with zero. So this actually has 536 rows and three columns, which you can remember from the Excel I just showed you. So that's the first function we have here. So I'm going to comment that out. And then we're going to use, you know, Next, we're going to get into some data analytics using this describe method. So let's comment this in and check out what that has. Again, it's not this slow when I am not recorded. So it's going to tell us in the prices column and the square feet column that the count is 535, which it already told us. So, of course, there's 535 in each column. The mean, and we'll discuss that later, the standard deviation from the mean, right? So that's, um, if you're not used to statistics, then this might not make sense, but it's basically telling us that the standard deviation from anything not inside the mean is $33,000 or 310 square feet. The minimum is zero square feet at 75,980. So this tells me that I have an error somewhere because there's no house that's worth 75,000 with zero square feet. The three thresholds, 25, 55, 50, and 75%. And then the max. So in our household on 5 October, 
uh, we had a three hundred and eighty six thousand dollar house and that had three thousand one hundred twenty square feet okay so we can extract the individual data from this for example we can get the mean prices and the mean square feet of my neighborhood okay then we can make them strings and give us some statements so let's check that out I'm going to comment this out okay and then we're going to tell us what the mean price and the mean square feet for our neighborhood is So the mean price for my neighborhood is $252,000.77.93. Okay, this data was as of 5 October. So the mean square foot for my neighborhood is 2008, and that's because I rounded it up, if you remember what we just showed. All right, so that's good to know, but those are just um, strings I made up here. So I took the mean price from the data frame, I rounded it two places because everything in pandas is floats because, um, you know, depending on what you're doing, you want extreme precision. We don't need that precision here. We did the same for our mean square feet. We extracted the square feet, then we rounded it, and then we made them strings right here. And you need to make them strings to concatenate to make statements like this. So you can even do calculations using this data. For example, let's divide the mean price by the mean square feet to get the mean price per square feet. All right, so let's uh, comment that out. And let's just get this statement. So the mean price per square feet for my neighborhood is $125.88. Okay, I did that by taking the mean price, which we got up here, divided by the mean square feet, which we got here, and then down here I made it into a string so I can concatenate it to this statement, and it says $125. So th that's a pretty cool, um, you know, statements to print out. I'm making them strings, I'm rounding them. But we can also graph this. So let me comment that out. OK, so we could take a graph of all of this using a library called matplotlib. So you have to install matplot, pip install matplotlib, and then import matplotlib as plt. All right. And so in it, it has a style you have to tell it what style you want to use. So we're going to say ggplot. Right? And then we're going to look at a price graph first. Then you tell it to show the plot. It's going to create this graph. And as you can see, it's showing a plot of all the prices. Now these, I imagine, are the errors I need to investigate. That's the one that had zero square feet, which I doubt there's one that has zero square feet. And then since I didn't define an axis, it just came up and evenly distributed the 536 addresses and then just picked six. And I imagine these are somehow evenly spaced. So in between there and there, and there and there are evenly spaced addresses. But since I didn't define the access, axis, it just picked those. But this is pretty um, consistent with what we just saw. That 252,000, I believe, was our mean square price or our mean um, price. And as you can see, it's pretty much on there. And we could do that with square feet as well. So let's comment out the price graph and bring in this square feet graph. And pretty much the same thing. I didn't define the axis, so it gave me six evenly distributed uh, addresses. And I think 2008 was the rounded mean square feet, and that's pretty consistent. If you look there, 
I would have to investigate what these are because, uh, you know, I'm pretty sure there's no house that has 263 square feet. This is that large house, that 3,000 square feet. And then we have another one that's, um, you know, 2,900. All right, so let's exit out of that. So going back to our mean price per square feet. So we're going to run that. But if we were investors, we could use this data to find homes in this neighborhood selling at below. Oh, let's comment out the graph that we just showed. Okay, so it says the mean price per square feet for your neighborhood is $125. So if we were investors, we would be trying to find homes in this neighborhood selling below that square feet. So I know if I find a realtor and, uh, you know, they're kind of doing some pressure tactics where they're trying to tell you, you know, focus on the mortgage. Uh, you know, I would like to ask to focus on houses below the mean price per square feet in my neighborhood. Now, that doesn't mean it's a great value just because it is. It might have problems. Uh, it might have been on the market for just one day if it's above the price per square feet. So, you know, that's not the only tool I would use, but this is just an example of the data of what you can do, use. And this is just the tip of the iceberg on what kind of data analytics that we can do autonomously using Python. You could do this in the Excel if you wanted to, but as this data set gets larger and larger, and uh, assuming you're not recording yourself doing it, you could have this done every morning when you wake up for you. And it would say these houses are selling below the pr mean price per square feet instead of having, you know, employees going through Excel every single day, importing all the data, etc., etc. So I hope please remember to subscribe to my channel. I hope you liked this video. If you did, you know, like the video physically by clicking the like button. Um, remember to subscribe to my channel. Click the notification icon so you can know when I'm posting new videos. And then watch the playlist from beginning to end and see how this is growing, you know, iteratively growing into um, great data analytics for maybe a real estate investor. And also, if you're using Python somehow to do real estate analytics or any data analytics or anything nerdy at all, uh, please leave a comment and tell me how. And if you got a YouTube video, uh, leave a comment and I'll shout you out. So um, have a happy Thanksgiving. Goodbye, world.